there was one person that, that I got to spend a lot of time with. And see, society does have instruments that help keep kids like me on the right track. And I decided I was going to go meet with him. See, he was, I believe he's a sergeant in the police force in the neighborhood that I grew up in. Now, he didn't drive around in black and white. He drove around in undercover cars. And I always would recognize his car because it had a broken headlight. Don't ask me how. He didn't know that I knew that. Now, I wasn't as caught up in the violence and the things that, that killed my beloved um, babysitter and first crush because I knew that I didn't want to follow that path. But I was ornery, and I guess was is probably an operative word in that statement. <laughs> and recently I decided I'm going to go, understand my roots, and I'm going to go sit down with that man that chased me, caught me, drug me home, a little tough love. Back then he had a lot more tough love options than he did now, but he kept me in line. <laughs> and I sat down with, he's now the captain of the East Valley Police Force. So he's, his career has risen quite greatly. And, and I've, I've kept my tabs on him because I've seen his career grow. And I sat down with him and I want to share with you something real quick here. You guys know that I'm pretty good at this speaking thing, right? I can get on TV, I can get in front of people, I can be translated. I have never sweat like I sweated when I sat in that room with him. I mean, I went right back to that 15-year place. I was like, I did nothing wrong to be here. I've only done stuff right. I've repented, I've prayed, but I still was afraid that I wasn't going to come out of that place. And I want you to know that I started sweating and I just sat there and on. And I said, all right. And we brought the cameras in. We're going to interview this. And none of this stuff is usable because I look like I am literally in the middle of Jamaica on a hot summer day with spandex wrapped around me. That's how bad I'm sweating. So I told I said, Randy, I, I don't think you understand kind of what I do now. Because you know how sometimes in this business it's hard to explain this. Isn't this hard to explain? So I said, hey, Randy, can I ask you for a huge favor? He said, will you do me a favor? And I, I feel like I've added a lot of gray hairs to his head already and asking him for another favor. So I said, Randy, will you come and just say a few words with my family that is Vaisalus because you were one of those key individuals that helped me overcome my adversity. So please help me welcome one of my mentors, Mr. Randy Pentis. <laughs> I didn't realize I was going to get paid. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take it. You get wonderful, Ryan. I had angry Ryan. <laughs> but beneath that, angry Ryan was a wonderful Ryan. And it's true about the gray hair. <laughs> Most of the things he said was true. I took great pride that he was sweating like crazy in that interview. I was so happy. As a cop, I loved that. I loved the fact that I had a cameraman sweating. Yeah. I don't even know this dude, and he's sweating in the back. Um, and I, as a good cop, I did my homework on the company, and I was instructed uh, by Ann Kemp that if I met someone and say I was a family friend, which was true, I did that with, with most people, but I have a suggestion. The energy, all of you, this venue is not big enough. I think next year you should rent the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Yeah. Yeah. 
I've been in law enforcement 27 years, and at the time that I was dealing with Ryan, um, in fact, his older brother, I didn't know Ryan at the time, but I was involved in that investigation. Uh, things like that break your heart. He needs to be held accountable, but it breaks your heart because uh, people don't have to go away to prison w in, under the right environment. And I don't think a lot of people know of Ryan's adversity. Um, and he opened up his soul to you today. Um, and, I, and I was very impressed. I also was involved in the investigation of that homicide of his a babysitter. Shot in the head is right after she put her baby down, standing on the street, minding her own business. We read about the senseless violence across our country every day. But with Ryan, I saw a heart. I saw something in there. I have, I, I've raised three boys. I've got a 20-year-old, a 22-year-old, and a 27-year-old. And I took a role with Ryan as, as a cop, and I took a personal interest in him. I didn't want to lose him. And Thank you. Actually, actually, as I'm standing here, I think you can thank me for you guys having a job. <laughs> I, didn't, you know, I didn't think about it in that way. But with this angry kid who just didn't see any other options, um, although I didn't know about that taillight, <laughs> we, may have to, we may have to look at that. Um, there was a night, um, I took him home, I grabbed him by the neck, knocked on the door, showed his mother, I go, this is what your son's doing. I saw a mom who loved her son and didn't want to lose him either. I put him on Randy curfew. Most jurisdictions, curfews, 10 o'clock at night, kids can't be out. No, if he was on the street and I saw him, he was going to jail. I didn't want to see him on the street. Um, there was another time he did run from me. And I caught him. Yeah. I remember that. And I'll never we had a discussion did. about running from the police. <laughs> and how I was personally upset about that. Yeah. And it won't ever happen again. Never. And it didn't. That's about the time where the gray hair started. <laughs> but as I saw him and I saw this heart, and it reminded me when I worked 9-11 uh, near Ground Zero, there was a sign that said, it's not the size of the act, but the size of the heart. And that's what Ryan's about. About seven months, six, seven months ago, I got a call from Ann Kemp to do an interview. He said, do you remember Ryan Blair? I didn't want to say too much. <laughs> But I did. That was the sweat story. But in that interview, he said to me, you know, why did you feel a need to save him? And I told him, I said, I didn't save you. You saved yourself. That's what happens here. And he truly did. He's a success story that's unusual. And I've described him to some people, and he wouldn't like this, as he's a good boy. I know he's a 31-year-old man, um, but I still see him as a good boy, just like my kids. Um, he learned to help himself. He learned to make the right choices. And I saw that in sitting here yesterday and, and today, he has surrounded himself with people who share his same qualities. And, and it's so impressive. impressive. He's an uncommon story with uncommon qualities, and I, I'm just so very proud of him. Um, I want to thank you for having me here today uh, and listening to me. And Ryan, I love you and I respect you, and thank, thank you. you. Hold on here. Hold on here, Andy. Thank you. Hold on real quick. So, so like I said, I still am Henri, so Randy, I, I used to uh, uh, run from you, fair amount. And that was a mistake. <laughs> and, that, and you don't run from Randy Pentis. Um, he's an athlete. Well, 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 you could now. Well, okay, first of all, they didn't explain to me that he runs marathons. 
Now, I might have had some wheels as a young boy, but I couldn't run a marathon. Uh, Randy actually created a charity along with some other police officers. And Randy, uh, it has to do with running. Will you explain the charity a little bit? Well, it's, it's Cops Running for Children. And we've been running, I've ran a New York Marathon, Chicago Marathon, I do triathlons. In 2006, uh, we ran 85 miles across the Sahara Desert. Uh, last year, we ran the Great Wall of China Marathon. July, we ran ultra marathon, this year, we ran an ultra marathon in Iceland, 35 miles. Lovely, 28 degrees, snow. <laughs> Really enjoyed it. We raise all the money that we raise goes to children's charities and goes for children. Uh, we try to make a difference on every angle. And there's there's two charities that you were telling me about in our interview that that you were discussing. Uh, Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, uh, Children's Hospital, Make a Wish Foundation. Those are three of our primary. Although we do others as well. Uh, we just like all of you. I hear speakers yesterday and today when you're talking among yourselves and up here on the stage about being impact players. And that's what I want to be with kids. That's what you want to be uh, with people's lives, with our health and the people that we serve. So uh, that's what we're after with children. So I'm sitting in this room in this interview with Randy and I'm still nervous to this day and I'm sweating. I don't like sweating. And I'm looking for a greater reason for all this sweat and, and he tells me about his charity. And right then and there, I knew exactly why I'd been called on this quest. I mean, think about the Vaisal's values and what Randy has been running for. Think about this. This is an interesting thing here. Neither he or I knew why we were attracted to each other. He thought he knew, and I thought I knew. He thought it was because I was an unruly kid, and he was a police officer. And I thought that was because I was an unruly kid, and he's a police officer. We were both right for a change. There's no arguments. But I, I agree, there is no accidents in life. So I'm sitting here listening to his charity, Cops Run for Kids. And I say, you know, Randy, tell me about your upcoming event. You have an upcoming event, event coming? We're going to run a, a marathon in Argentina in March in the Patagonia National Forest. Uh, ultimately, we're going to do an event on each continent. So after South America, we'll have Australia, and then we're going to save Antarctica for last. <laughs> I am not a very bright man. And, and as you know, with our MTDN partnership, where we can donate and give to charities of our choice and actually grant those wishes and, and contribute. So I had Ann call up Randy and say, you know, Randy, please do me a favor and utilize the MTDN vehicle. We'll go ahead and sponsor you on there and put up a wish. And you'd put up a wish there to run uh, this, this, this marathon, right? Correct, this marathon in March. And it was $10,000. Uh, is it 10000 that you needed to get there? Is that yes. The, yeah. So, Randy, because of all that you've done for me personally, your wish has been granted. Thank you. That is So, whoever thought, this is touching to me as you can see, whoever thought that I once used inappropriately taxpayer payer dollars, Randy, to chase me while I was running, whoever thought that I would now be repaying that debt using my dollars to pay Randy to run. So Randy, I recommend you start dreaming big and put some other wishes up there because I know that members of our Vaisalis community will contribute to the various wishes that your organization has, but that one there is mine. Cross it off. It's done. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very Randy. much. Please welcome, thank, please thank Randy Pentis. Thank you, sir. Thank you.